Hi, Rutuja. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Long time no see. Last time I saw you was in Natasha's birthday party. Four years back, I guess. Uh, that was like years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. How is everything going on now? Uh, pretty, pretty okay. I mean, this lockdown is pretty frustrating. Mm. But uh, I have something to look forward for. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, just busy and, you know, just uh, doing wedding preps and just meeting and spending a lot of time with family and stuff. So it's been good as of now, the lockdown and stuff, yeah. Sure, sure. What what training were you doing during, I mean, March, from March to July? Like, what have you been working on? Any specific things? Well, I think uh, I worked a lot on my shoulder. Like, uh, I just, I mean, before, after the law, I mean, before the lockdown, I played only two tournaments mm -hmm. and uh, my shoulder was like, it was not in a good shape. So, I mean, I think it was a good time again. I mean, I got a couple of months to work on the shoulder and obviously sure. I did a lot of maintenance, maintenance stuff because obviously everyone was, I mean, being at home, like we, 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 do not, uh, we didn't have a lot of equipment and stuff to work sure. with. So, yeah, so I think I made full use of the time of being home and just working on the shoulder and hopefully it's strong enough to, you know, sustain for quite some time now. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. That's good. That's good. And um, good. Hopefully, you'll get back to tennis soon. And um, yeah. Um, when did you get started with tennis? What's your story? Uh, well, I started tennis when I was nine. Uh, my dad, he was a national national player like he was a track and field person like mm -hmm. javelin throw and 400 meter hurdles so like he was already into sports and like he wanted to put me in some kind of sport and uh, his one of his friends son used to play tennis so mm -hmm. it's like let's just put her in tennis and see how it goes sure. so obviously the first year i mean i was like i'll go one day and just skip one day and mm -hmm. you know skip four days it was like that but I think when I played my first, like, you know, first tournament, like, it was at some club in Baker's Basket or something. And, you know, like, the nature of, I mean, nature of the sport, you know, to just yeah. compete and, you know, like, the the fire to, like, you know, win. You right. know, like, I won, I mean, what, even 10 years old, but, you know, like, it was just the, that feeling. I don't, I, I can't explain it very well, but that feeling of just competing, and which is not just for tennis, but even in life, you have to compete for everything, which I realize now. Right. But I think that's how I got into tennis. When I was, I mean, after that, it was just tennis. Like, started playing a lot of tournaments in, in Pune, then in Maharashtra. Then I started traveling all over India and um, just playing a lot of tournaments and training and stuff. Like, so it was just like about sports in the house because of that, you know, and then... I I was 13. I won the under 14 nationals, and after mm -hmm. that, it was just ten. Like my parents, they uh, I still remember. I I finished my seventh grade, and my parents they asked me if um, what do I want to do, and like any kid who you know is doesn't want or want to wants to escape school will okay. say that I want to play sports. Right. And I think that's how I got into it. But probably the best decision as of now. Like it's it's. Uh, yeah, that's how I got into tennis. It was like nothing. It was not planned. Uh, mm. Like no, like I didn't know where I was going and what I was, you know, putting myself into. Or like even like neither did my family. Like now, when when we look back and like we discuss about you know how far we've come, my parents they always say that if they know how expensive and how time consuming this sport was, right. that they would never put me into this. But yeah, it's all been good. Up, I mean. Like the decision has been good, and my family has been very supportive of whatever I do. And yeah, there's still a long way to go, but yeah, it's been good as of now. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I mean, it's great that you've gotten family support. I mean, especially in India, you know how tough it is, right? I mean, yeah, parents with with their studies and everything. That's that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
like my parents they never like pushed me into anything like even in school i was i was pretty decent in school right. as well and they or they never like pushed me my like my, my dad never pushed me my mom would always be on both the same she'd be on standing on both the stones and saying abhyas kar and tennis pun khel and all, all of that stuff but right. my dad was very he still very chill and mm-hmm. he's like what like you put in your 100% and whatever happens happens so yeah sure sure so um what about the culture in pune with tennis like um do you find it different as compared to other cities in india of course i mean it has some of the best coaches here so well um i don't know how to answer this because you know i've never trained anywhere else other than mm-hmm. pune mm-hmm. but uh, you know like uh, there's himan sir who i train with now right. and before before i went to college i used to train with sandeep sir so like basically the uh, maharashtra has had or like has a lot of players you know like who has who has who have played for india and right. uh they're doing well on the atp and the wta circuit so right. like i think probably delhi probably has another group of players like that mm-hmm. but other than that i don't i i don't find it you know like different or difficult to train in pune because there are a lot of players who come to pune because of the culture here you exactly. know about the tennis because mm-hmm. the tennis like the coaches here they know or like they know what they're doing and yeah. they know how to train the players and they're like especially like with hemant sir like i have like i am someone who needs to be comfortable with my coach mm-hmm. and um I think after college when I came back and that is what I was looking for mm-hmm. and I think that's something I've found in him and sir like he's very open about things and um, he if I have a, I mean I ask a lot of questions at times and he he's patient he'll ask the questions and you know like I'll ask him like you know what do I need to improve and everything so like a lot of players who come here because of how him and sir treats them or how the way he coaches and and because of his knowledge for the sport like he's uh-huh. always you know he's always reading about something he's always like sending us articles and everything mm-hmm. to read about mm-hmm. so i think that is what you know makes a coach you know like like to come and train with Definitely. so yeah so yeah and i mean probably there are coaches even outside pune who are good good and you know in other states like gujarat or hyderabad or bangalore but yeah. i've i've not heard of them and uh, or maybe because i've been born and brought up here so right. probably that's the reason mm-hmm. yeah sure sure yeah definitely i mean he wants uh, the number of players he's produced exactly yeah. so okay so nothing was planned and you decide to get serious um, at the age of 12 13 yeah yeah mm mm-hmm. Right. and uh, what happened to your studies then well uh as i like i said i was pretty decent in school as well and i, I finished i did my 10th open school mm-hmm. uh and then i did in my 11th and 12th in bmcc yeah uh, uh and uh, yeah then i went to us to you know finish my undergrad but i don't i i never thought my uh, education was compromised or anything because i feel like uh, you know when you're doing a sport or when you when you're physically active you know you're so focused in what you're doing mm-hmm. it's just it, it just makes studying easier sure. you know like you don't have to put in a lot of hours to you know like to learn something because sure. you have the ability to focus and finish what what the ta- like the task which is given to you in a certain amount of time sure. and i still remember i i was supposed to give my 10th grade like 10th grade exams and i i played the junior aussie mm-hmm. and i came back and i just had a month to study for it not even a month probably 20, 25 days right and uh, I think I did decent. I got sixty-eight percent. I mean, it's pretty less, but in a month of sure. month of education, a month of studying, it was it was okay. Sure. Like yeah. I think if I would have put in more, have more more time or something, I would have scored more. But I mean, I mean, I was happy with what I got because I I mean I play I played the junior Aussie and I made my debut in uh, uh, Fed Cup team also. Mm-hmm. So it was good year for me. 
yeah definitely i mean uh, when you compare it to the amount of time others spend studying and what results yeah. you know they've gotten you definitely yeah. be at the top if you did put in those extra hours so that's great exactly yeah and um mhm so yeah i know family has been really supportive who else yeah. has been really influential in your career well um uh... my i mean i would always give all the credit to my parents because they have been i mean they have seen me grow they have seen me make mistakes and they have seen me make this like a huge decision of going to uh, us you know like was i was doing i was 16 when i made that decision uh-huh. of uh, going to us and i think i was i think i was uh, 520 or 525 at that time in wta Mm-hmm. and um, yeah like everyone i remember like my few of my friends and you know like the parents were like why why is she going to us you know she's just started playing women's and she's doing well and all the, all of that stuff but right. you know there are a lot of things happening you know on on the personal front on the professional front which which made me take that decision but even i mean even though i feel like sometimes my father was not happy with that decision mm-hmm. but um, my mom like she because because of his profession like he was never you know at home and he could he didn't see what i was going through right so my mom she she's always been there she's been like rock solid and she i mean she saw what i was going through and she completely supported the decision and she's like you know if you feel this is the right decision you should go for it mm-hmm. and you know like the yeah so my parents have been constant support like throughout and uh now i feel like my whole team like you know there's himan sir there is um my physios nutritionist and every like the whole team you know they everyone's like such a core part of who i am sure. and you know like the person they're building into like especially like me being very injury prone and you know mentally just you know feeling feeling very um uh, negative about the part where you know i've finished you know i've I finished three years on the tour after graduation, mm-hmm. and I haven't actually competed a whole calendar year. I probably must have competed six to seven months. That's it, mm-hmm. and that too with a with a okay okay shoulder. Mm-hmm. So now that I've actually found a team, I feel very I feel a little bit more calmer in my head. Where you know I can rely on them. I don't have to think you know about everything. I don't have to think about my food or uh, traveling. Mm-hmm. or the training part on my own you know i can just yeah. leave it up to them and these people will take care of me and i think that's what the athlete should do they should just think of you know practicing and putting in the same amount of you know uh, dedication even in the matches so yeah. now i feel at so i feel my team is also like the people who i look up to now and you know yeah. who i rely on those are my like you know biggest supporters after my parents for sure wonderful wonderful and um Yeah it's great that uh, you have a good team now and yeah you basically don't have to you just have to do what they tell you to that's it there's not much more to think you can just focus on yourself and you know strategies yeah. tactics and stuff and exactly that's great um america talk to us about america what do you learn there how was your experience Well the first thing that comes to me when I think of America is a huge cultural shock. Mm-hmm. When I went there I was just right. like I was just shocked in like a million aspects of you know what was happening around me mm-hmm. like from the basic thing of you know not understanding the professors in the classroom because in Texas they have a very thick southern accent no, sure, and the sure. classrooms were huge like they were like auditorium so it was very difficult for me to actually focus and you know understand what they're speaking so the first year i still remember the first 6 months i would call my mom and i would like cry every day and mm-hmm. i would not i would not see the time what the time is in india mm-hmm. i would just call her up like at 2 am or 3 am and i'll just start crying as like i don't want to be here just take me back and you know, all of that stuff yeah. the first 6 months but uh, yeah like uh, and um, on the on, on the tennis court also i suffered a lot like you know i was not playing good tennis i was playing at the number 5 position mm-hmm. so basically everything was just very 
crappy in the beginning but um, but again like uh, university programs they have such good facilities whether it's whether it's um, whether it's food or uh, training coaching on the tennis sports school or everything they just have like a whole package out there and uh, as soon as the coach realized that you know i was struggling not only in the classroom because i mean i was struggling because we have to maintain a certain gpa he yeah. asked me about it yes i'm struggling i'm struggling to understand the professors i'm struggling on the court like i don't know where i'm supposed to focus mm-hmm. because in india i had help with everything because my parents yeah. would take care of everything. so there i had to do everything on my own right and yeah and then you know like they have a sports psychologist there and mm-hmm. A, a great a great team of sports psychologists you know who come give lectures to all the athletes and you know if we had problems we can go talk to them mm-hmm. i think after for like four months i took sessions and you know i after that i started getting comfortable and all of that stuff and i think i found my groove after that right. but then after that it just about learning you know like uh, learning how to how to be a good teammate even though you know the tennis tennis is individual sport uh, tennis is an individual sport Sure. like you have to learn how to be uh, a good teammate a good um, a good classmate a good student and everything basically you have to learn about everything sure. and not not only did i get better at tennis because i was part of part of a team of seven girls who mm-hmm. who have who not like who like me have been like top 60 world juniors and three mm-hmm. of them were top 10 right. so i was you know, practicing with all of those girls and you know just to see how they are handling their situations and you know how they're competing on the court so basically i was just learning from everywhere like even in the classrooms i was taking classes which i'd never heard of mm-hmm. so basically i was i learned so much of not to just you know become a better tennis player but as a person right i did come in service i did uh, you know i did like um, a lot of things which i would have never even thought of mm-hmm. like i did i either my favorite class would be um what was that class i i don't remember that class but you know a study of insects so i forgot oh, the name okay. uh yeah i did study of insects for uh, you know for one semester and i literally had to go on a field trip and catch 30 insects as <laughs> one of the field trip assignments Right. and i had all these nets and uh, wires and everything to put the insects in and you know right. that was something i would never even think of like i'm i'm scared of insects like yeah. if i see a cockroach I'll jump <laughs> if i see a like yeah if i see a bee coming close to me i'll i'll get scared but then i was yeah. going there and i caught so basically it was just so much of learning you know new things and learning you know like you know i can survive on my own mm-hmm. i i learned you know where i lack in tennis and you know how how, how i need to improve on it sure. and this is basically like learning about everything and i after i graduated i remember they have a small uh, function for all these student athletes who are going to graduate mm-hmm. and um, a student advisor like uh, every uh, sport has their academic advisor like when she said that she has seen me grown from my freshman year to my senior year i literally had tears in my eyes because my mom was like you know listening to the speech and like it was just like i was completely different person like mm-hmm. during my year year sure and everyone had the same views and it was just amazing because as a person you don't realize it but when people say that you you see that you know you've come a long way right. so college has been a roller coaster of emotions or roller coaster of learning new things being disappointed being happy and mm-hmm. just yeah happy memories at the end of it wonderful wonderful that's that's great to hear and um but if given a choice would you do it again or would you choose to stay back in india and grind it out and you know possibly be do you think you'd have reached a higher rank after 4 years if you stayed in india yeah so i if if given the choice right now i would definitely stay back Mm-hmm. and uh, but then that just depends you know like i was just 16 so right. like i couldn't handle the you know the uh, external parts external things that were happening but sure. now if i see i've learned so much that i know mm-hmm. how to handle those so i would mm-hmm. stay back now right. and i would see where 
the next four, like the four years would take me. I obviously think about it sometimes. What if mm-hmm. I didn't go to US? Sure. Where would I be? You know, I do think about it, but mm-hmm. like now I see like it doesn't matter because now I've grown and now I've seen what I need to do. My, right. Maybe I'll take a little bit more time than usual, like mm-hmm. if, than uh, normal people do. But I think I'll get to where I want to be. But even if I don't, I don't think so. I'll be disappointed because I know I'm putting my 100% right. and I would keep putting it, you know, I'll keep putting it. And if I get, if I get to the dreams, amazing. If I don't, I don't think so. There's any need to be disappointed about it. Right. Right. Wonderful. Um, so something special mm-hmm. happened this year. Yes. Talk to us, talk to us about it. I'm not talking about, um, you know, the personal front. I'm talking about the Fed Cup. Yeah, well, uh, we qualified for the World Group playoffs for the first mm-hmm. time in the Indian Fed Cup history, and probably the best week I've had, you know, during Fed Cup or you know even my my tennis career, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, we we were supposed to play China the first day sure. um, of the um, of the tournament and. All of us, you know, like we were just sitting there and we were talking about it and everyone say, well, at least China will be, you know, we would be competing against the top 40, you know, like the worst player they had was world number 49, Mm. which was Peng Shui. Right. I was like, every whoever plays, they're going to play a top 50 player. So it's like, it's just amazing. So I, I, I didn't know I was going to win or whatever. I was just Mm. like very excited to, you know, to compete against, uh, against a top 50 player okay. and I didn't even know I was going to play and before one day before like when Vishal sir said that I'm playing I was like over the moon like obviously I was very nervous also mm-hmm. right. but I was very excited to go out there and play and I think I went up the I went up 4-1 in the first set mm-hmm. but I think after that like just the experience and everything of, yeah. of Zhang just you know, just came in and then, you know, it was just, I mean, it was a good match, but I couldn't get the win. But I think Mm -hmm. it was, it was a good uh, opening round. And I think I carried the same momentum in the rest of the week. Sure. And uh, uh, against Korea, Uzbekistan, Chinese Taipei, I think I played some of, like I played really good tennis and it was, it was nerve wracking because, you know, to have the, to have, so, like to have India on your back and the flag on your chest is just different pressure. Sure. And everyone is actually extra motivated to play. So that week, like all of us, like whether it was me, Ankita, Sanya, Ria, or Sojanya, all of us were just so motivated. I, and and the good part was to have Sanya was just extra motivation because you know to just see like where she has reached and the way she was still working you know like she would come she would do her warm up her routines and everything and she'd be ready to hit with all of us mm-hmm. you know she'd like warm me up before my match even though she was playing last you know like doubles <laughs> and that was just extra motivation that just kept me more more you know like more excited to go out there and you know to compete mm-hmm. and when, like as the week was progressing everyone was just playing better tennis and when when uh, we actually won against Indonesia, like I still remember Ankita came up to me and she's like, Hum actually qualify kar gai kya? Like she asked me this question three times. Right. And I was like, Yes, we won. Like we are the second best, you know, on, on in the in the whole draw. Like China China right. is one, they won all and then it was us. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was like everyone was happy, everyone had different emotions. And you know, I was I was almost in tears. Ankita was in complete shock. And then Sojanya and Ria were just dancing. And then Sanya, because she's more experienced, she was so calm and poised about it. Right. So it was just everyone was so happy. And um, even after we came back, like uh, like to see, you know, to to give something to Hemansor as a gift, you know, like yeah. we came back at the airport and he came to receive us. So. Right. That was another uh, another moment which I will cherish all my life mm-hmm. is because it's like Ankita and I have been working like I have just been working here with him for three years now, but yes. Ankita has been with for like almost I don't know how many years now. 
sure. and to give him this is something like to be very proud of like every coach dreams about this and mm-hmm. like especially country like india like where yeah. tennis is still going and you know not everyone knows about tennis sure. and to do something like this to make a mark you know to be the first team to do that it's very special mm-hmm. and like something to cherish wonderful wonderful thing um that's that's incredible in fact i mean it's not a yeah. joke and what, what what goes on inside the locker room like what do you guys talk about i mean preparing for matches and when you're playing for india is it like a really supportive environment or hostile no it's very supportive actually right. because like mm-hmm. we have been you know, together and you know the locker room stuff is a little bit different because you know like the number 2 player goes it's not like you know it's not like davis cup you know mm-hmm. where every like there's one match at one time and everyone's together it's yeah. not like that it's, it was it was a different format you know the number 2 player plays first then the number 1 and then the doubles you know mm-hmm. so like yeah. you know everyone's warming up basically at a different time yeah. and um, i mean i mean obviously i mean it's a, it's a similar format but uh, i don't know how to explain but uh, you know it's very supportive like right. and ev- like if someone has already played the player they'll come tell you the tips mm-hmm. and you know they'll tell you ki ye karo wo karo like right, try right. to do this try to analyze while playing right. and after like after the whole match is done is just fun you know like everyone singing you know like we mm-hmm. we uh, we play some old hindi songs or yeah. you know like if someone doesn't like old hindi song which is me i'll just change the <laughs> playlist and everyone wants to be the dj so it's very it's very fun to be yeah. in a team to be in a team because like i have been a part of team four for four years during my mm-hmm. college years right. and like, probably cup is one of my favorite weeks because like all of us are traveling alone all you know all year long and you know they just want some company and like perfect cup is like the perfect week where you get yeah. to do that you know where you where you get to be with a lot of you know with your girls and you know just mm-hmm. just to have to compete and also have a relaxed time after the matches sure. like even if have a bad day like even if you win or even if you lose mm-hmm. the whole team is there to back you up so Definitely. it's very supportive fun and you know very motivated also that means you definitely that's wonderful to hear and um, okay back to you individually yeah okay what, what are your thoughts when you're playing players ranked higher than you like how do you go into i mean of course there are, there's always nerves there's always you know a balance of oh, i'm going to give it everything i don't care if i win or lose since they you know they have a higher rank but yeah. how yeah. do you go about it well same like you know you don't have anything to lose you just go out there and probably just give your 100% because like i feel like you know to the top player is not going to know about you Sure. clearly they don't know who you are they don't know like they haven't seen you compete a lot so they are they are the ones who who don't know anything about you so they are they don't know what to expect sure. but like since you have seen them on tv or you've seen them play a couple of times you know what what they can do mm-hmm. so like i still i mean i i have not played a lot of top 100 players probably i played three mm-hmm. but but all i've done is you know just go out there and play to my fullest because i have we have nothing to lose so why to why to think about it so probably and that's what heman heman sir says like know your strengths work around it and if it's not working try to go to her weaknesses so mm-hmm. probably the basic thing you can do and that's how i go about it. sure great great so um what has tennis taught you what have you learned in all these years that you have to compete for everything and enjoy what you do because if you don't enjoy what you're doing then it's 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 not going to be fun like it's not it's going to be it's going to be a lot of nerves it's going to be a lot of pressure and if you have pressure mm-hmm. you're not going to you you're not going to you, you're not going to win Mm-hmm. or not even not even not even you're not going to play uh, the way you want to and above the competing like you know you have to comp- it's not just tennis you know i've learned that you have to compete for everything 
in life and that is the main reason that is the main thing i've learned and like i mean it's just it's just i mean sometimes people forget that you know tennis is tennis can be ten, tennis can be tennis can be very it it can be like a teacher it teaches sure. you how to deal with disappointments it teaches you how to deal with happiness and it teaches you how to even actually treat people at sometimes sure so yeah this is this is what i've learned you know throughout all these years like i mean enjoy compete but also remember who you are and and just treat people with kindness definitely definitely i mean i personally feel you know this playing a three setter teaches you so much more than you yeah. do in probably 5 10 months in school just handling yeah. everything and just the stress and you know yeah so great and over the years support government support private support have you been getting any anything um after i graduated from college i i had a sponsor from uh, reliance youth mm-hmm. foundation for for two years and they were very good i mean they really helped me when i re- when i needed it because like as soon as i came like no one was going to support me and they did which was okay. very generous of them and um, now i'm with luxure and i had i had been with them before my college years and that and i'm very glad they um, you know they decided to support me again and now for my clothing and equipment i'm with yonex um always had been a babble at girl took me quite some time to you know shift to yonex and find right. my groove into it now that i have like i really like the stuff they like the rackets also mm-hmm. and uh, my nutrition partner is uh, fast enough like it's been what a year with fast enough and i've seen tremendous improvement in my uh in my physical abilities like you know just about my recovery and fatigue mm-hmm. like i have i struggled with it a lot and since so your is gotten so much better and stuff so yeah this um uh, government so like maharashtra so like Mah- msrt uh, had the vision program for quite some time but mm-hmm. i don't know why it is shut right now sure i mean i don't know and i don't want to get into it but yeah. um uh, yeah i mean that's the only support we get from mm-hmm. maharashtra apart yeah. from the wild card which uh, if we play in um, in the itfc or if if i really need it they're very generous with it like because you know being a top maharashtra player they help me out with it which is amazing like sundar yeah. sir never we whenever i ask him about for a wild card he he never hesitates which is i mean i'm very thankful for yeah, it thankful. and yeah, that's that's the only support i have as of now that's that's good i mean um at least i mean it's good to see organizations like these supporting tennis and yeah. women's tennis and you know especially when it's growing that's no good. definitely you know, like like we need uh, more people like more uh, more associations like luxor you know reliance to you know come up even for the upcoming players not just for us but even for yeah. the upcoming players sure so talk to us about women's tennis how can the sport become how can we make it more popular well i mean sanya is a perfect example of how to make it popular mm-hmm. you know like done amazing things you know at grand slams at wta events and it's just amazing you know like she still manages to do it sure. and uh, yeah, definitely you know like we like the our generation needs to compete more needs to you know at least be ranked in like you know inside 150 for the world to recognize us sure. like to even to like get there it's not easy and you know you need a lot of hard work and you know dedication and sacrifices and you know like like the fed cup week when we all were together like mm-hmm. and i saw aurya saw janya ankita sanya they you know everyone's so focused and dedicated and you know everyone is everyone does what's needed for their own bodies no one will you know try to copy someone else sure. like you know doing the things you know like i didn't i mean i didn't see this a couple of years ago like mm-hmm. before i went to college i didn't see this 
But right. now that I'm seeing this, like at least we're on the right path. Mm-hmm. So if maybe we'll get there sooner or later, but I feel like if you are on the right path, you're gonna get there. So I think just the rankings and the stuff is the only way that you know, like how women's tennis is gonna you know be recognized and stuff. Because if you're ranked like three hundred, four hundred, it's 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 good, but it's not something which the world is gonna see. Right. So you need. Make a mark by moving up in the rankings, and that's how you're gonna, you know, achieve that for the women's yeah. tennis. Most definitely, most definitely. And uh, what's next for you? Goals, plans? I mean, whatever you can share. Well, obviously, uh, the goal is to you know compete again as soon as as soon as we can. But mm-hmm. since it's not, it's not in our hands. So obviously, the goals for me. would probably for next year to you know like at least enter you know top 200 150 if possible and for like and the main thing for me is to stay healthy and complete a whole calendar year you know to okay. compete and not just not just compete 6 months and you know not be you know not be healthy i want to be healthy i want to be able to compete and see where i can go after that because okay. i like i can have as many goals i want mm-hmm. but Not achieve it if I'm not healthy or if my body is not going to support me. Right. So if for the next year, at least for the whole of next year, I would like to be healthy and you know just work on work work on my injuries and work around it and you know just compete and see where it takes me. Yep. Hopefully, hopefully you'll stay fit and um, yeah. Hopefully when you are fit, yeah. Yeah. And. Um, i'm sure when you get a i mean you have you don't know right i mean it's i mean you haven't played a full calendar year so um when you do remain fit you may even you know go up the rankings by leaps and bounds as compared to when you're exactly. getting injured and coming back and then again it takes you know so many months to just get back to where you were right exactly yeah this is like an on and off process which is actually very frustrating as well and You know, like if you complete a whole calendar year, you know, like what you can do in a year, and then you can set better goals. Sure. Yeah. Great. So, advice, advice for the people who want to get started with tennis and who want to pursue tennis, the women, the girls, the boys who want to, you know, pursue tennis. What advice do you have for them? Well, my advice would be, you know, like this, especially for the younger generation. who are playing you know like the under 10s and 12s who are playing now or who want to take up the sport you know because of all the legends out there it's like it's it's just to like you know like work hard and you know do the right things and and don't you know don't don't practice or don't you know work for 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 the results work 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 in the right way and if you work in the right way the results going to come come to you so just enjoy like i every time this is the best advice everyone is giving me just be fearless and mm-hmm. you know everything will come to you sure sure guys listeners um listen to her please and uh where can they follow your journey rutuja thank you so much well i am available you know you can see my journey on instagram or on facebook mm-hmm. i have uh i have a fan page on facebook and uh my instagram is there i'm trying to work on a website where uh, you know where i can share my journey it's still sure. under process but uh, yeah once it's there it should be up on my instagram and my facebook for you guys to follow wonderful so we'll have the show notes we'll have the links to rituja's accounts on the show notes so please do follow her and support her in any way and yeah do get in I'll, t- i'll share her email as well so if you want to get in touch with her for any sponsorship deals so i don't know what for any reason you can contact her so rutuja thank you so much for spending your post workout time with us thank you for having me it was such a pleasure and um, yeah all the best and i'll see you soon see you soon thank you